the new Mondeo is Ford's 1990s challenger in the important European family car market. Its eye-catching shape offers more than just stylish appeal. It's efficient, with an aerodynamic drag coefficient of just 0 0.31. And it shrouds a technical specification second to none. Inside, an interior that offers full five-seater comfort with the highest levels of appointment. Mondeo will be available in three body styles, a smart four-door, a sporty five-door, and an elegant estate. This program tells Mondeo's technical story and covers the key service features that you, the service technician, will need to know. It details the principal engine range fitted to Mondeo, the transmission system, and its drive to the front wheels. It covers Mondeo's newly designed suspension, as well as the remarkable adaptive damping. Steering, brakes, and the new traction control will all be dealt with in detail before we finally look at the new model's principal safety features and then its electrical system. Mondeo is not only Ford's new challenger in a key European market sector, it brings state-of-the-art automotive technology to you in the workshop. Mondeo's engine lineup is headed by three versions of Ford's recently introduced 16 valve twin cam Zeta unit. Outwardly, there are a few obvious changes to the engine. Nevertheless, there's a 1.6 litre version producing 90 PS, a 1.8 litre producing 115 PS, and a 2 litre producing a substantial 136 PS. In creating three versions of the engine, the designers have not varied the basic engine's stroke. The crankshaft is the same for each unit. Instead, they've varied the bore. Recognising each engine and its constituent parts in the workshop can be done in a number of ways. The cylinder head gaskets are tagged. One for the 1.6, two for the 1.8, and three for the 2 litre. To ease recognition of the camshafts, these are identified by different rings in the casting. The most obvious new design, common to each engine, is the inlet manifold and air inlet system. The inlet manifold and its integrated air chamber now hangs low behind the engine. This has been done to allow for Mondeo's low bonnet line. The throttle plate housing has been repositioned so that it's now vertical, although the tapered Venturi throat for the 1.6 litre engine has been retained. The sequential fuel injectors are fitted directly into the inlet manifold. The air inlet system now picks up air for the engine from behind the left-hand headlamp. To reduce air intake noise, it's fitted with a number of resonators, two of which are located under the left-hand fender 
behind the fender liner. An air duct leads from these resonators under the wing to the engine compartment. It feeds directly into the air filter. To that is connected the mass airflow meter. There are two more resonators. Before finally the air is drawn past the throttle plate into the inlet manifold. The exhaust manifold on these engines has also been revised to provide for the optimum flow of exhaust gases. Its location on the engine, however, remains unchanged. The pulse air system connects directly to the manifold as does the exhaust gas recirculating system. This is a completely new design. There's now a restriction or venturi in the EGR feed pipe. A differential pressure transducer is connected either side of this venturi, monitoring the flow of exhaust gases. This DPFE sensor signals EEC4 with any flow variations. The module in turn varies the operation of the EGR valve. The cooling system on these new engines remains as first introduced on Zeta. However, operation of the radiator fan is now controlled by EEC4. This reacts to signals on engine temperature received from the engine coolant temperature sensor. Depending on engine size and equipment, either a single speed, two speed or two speed double fan may be fitted. The oil lubrication system remains substantially as it was when this engine range was first introduced. The oil filter is located on the bulkhead side of the engine. Engine management for these petrol engines is handled by a revised EEC4 which now incorporates the EDIS4 electronics. This new EEC4 can manage one and a quarter million commands every second. It can also diagnose faults and compensate for wear during the life of the engine. On Mondeo's fitted with automatic transmissions, EDIS4 remains as a separate unit so that EEC4 can control shift operations. Routine service on these engines remains the same as for the original Zeta units. As to the engine management system, there's now a service plug fitted with a buzz bar so that the engine can operate at 95 octane fuel. Remove it and ignition timing is retarded for low octane fuel operation. Diagnosis of the full engine management system, specifically EEC4, should now be carried out using the new FDS2000 diagnostic centre. FDS is designed to diagnose faults on any of the individual electronic systems, engine management, ABS, adaptive damping, and it will certainly make this part of your service work substantially easier. It connects first to the battery. Then, in the case of engine management, a second connection is made to the diagnostic plug located on the right-hand side of the engine bulkhead. Depending on which electronic system you're testing, FDS itself will tell you how and where to connect up. It will then log itself on to the module and check that it's about to diagnose the system you have requested. In this case, EEC4. 
From then on, FDS will work its way through a complete diagnostic test cycle, but only at your insistence by using the touchscreen control. Clear, concise information in your own language is displayed on screen to keep you informed on the state of the test, any actions you may need to perform, and any faults that are found. In the event of a fault, FDS will record it and tell you what steps you have to take to cure that fault. In addition to its range of petrol engines, Mondeo is also available with a turbocharged intercooled diesel unit, the TCI engine. Developed from the 1.8 litre turbocharged engine fitted to Sierra, many of its components will be familiar, although certain features are new for Mondeo. Engine management has been placed under the control of a new electronic diesel control module, EDC for short, which assists both performance and economy, but particularly improves control of exhaust emission. The sensors contributing to EDC include a crankshaft speed and position sensor that reads off the flywheel. There's an engine coolant temperature sensor that monitors engine temperature. The fuel lever position sensor, or FLVR, will be familiar from the 1.8 unit fitted to Sierra. It monitors engine load. However, new to this diesel is the mass airflow meter, more commonly found on petrol engine vehicles. Its design still incorporates two hot wire sensors that provide a signal to the EDC module enabling it to monitor both the volume and temperature of air drawn in by the turbocharger. All these sensors feed information to EDC which computes it and in turn sends out control signals to various actuators. There's a cold advanced solenoid and a light load advanced solenoid both regulating the fuel injection's advance under all load and temperature conditions throughout the engine speed range. EDC also sends signals to the current to vacuum transducer, which in turn controls through vacuum the operation of the exhaust gas recirculation valve. This system, working in combination with an oxidation catalytic converter, ensures that exhaust emission levels on this engine fully meet the stringent 87 US emission requirements. Another important new feature on this TCI engine is its intercooled intake system. There's an air scoop formed by the bonnet insulation mat at the nose of the bonnet. Air is drawn in through this scoop passes down the channel formed between the bonnet and the insulation mat and from there onto the intercooler. A flexible rubber moulding forms the seal between the bonnet air channel and the intercooler. 
This newly developed TCI diesel is also fitted with a fuel heater to prevent waxing of the fuel when ambient temperatures are low. Diagnosis on the unit is now handled by the new FDS 2000 Diagnostic Center. As with the petrol engines, it'll guide you step by step through the full test procedure. The test connector is located on the right-hand side of the engine bulkhead. Manual transmission versions of Mondeo are fitted with the recently introduced MTX75 transaxle. The unit is largely unchanged from its introduction apart from minor modifications to its housing to suit the revised mountings in the new model. Where MTX75 is used with the 2-litre engine in Mondeo, the idler shaft has been reinforced by an additional support so it can handle the increased torque of that engine. An unusual feature on manual versions of Mondeo is the length of the drive shafts. In fact, both are technically the same length, although the right-hand shaft connects to the transaxle via an intermediate shaft to avoid vibration. The intermediate shaft is supported in a bearing bolted to the back of the engine block, there being a different bearing for each engine. Each drive shaft spindle is splined to its wheel hub and secured by a new type of nut. Known as a pack nut, this can be reused a limited number of times. The new automatic transaxle in Mondeo is the CD4E. Providing four forward gears and reverse, the unit is fully electronically controlled with EEC-4 managing the shift operations. Apart from routine oil level checks, there's no service requirement at this stage. However, diagnosis of reported faults should be handled by FDS 2000. In the event either MTX75 or CD4E have to be removed from Mondeo, there's now a new adapter to the familiar support bridge to hold the engine in place during this work. The bridge hooks onto the lifting eyes of the engine and locates on either fender and the front apron. Routine service on MTX75 is also confined to regular oil level checks.
Mondeo's front suspension is designed around the well-proven McPherson struts, each incorporating the coil spring and damper. Precise wheel location is maintained by lower wishbone suspension arms. These arms locate in vertical rubber bushes in a new suspension subframe. An important service point is that if these arms are removed, the securing bolts must be replaced from the top of the subframe, not the bottom. The subframe also carries the front anti-roll bar that acts on the McPherson struts. There's only one type of anti-roll bar fitting each Mondeo variant. The subframe bolts through rubber bushes directly to the underbody. When fitting, it's important to make sure these bushes fully support against the underbody and that the guide bores align accurately using the appropriate alignment tools. There are four principal fixing bolts which must be correctly tightened to the specified torque. In addition, the clamp screw securing the wishbone ball joint to the wheel spindle must be fitted from front to rear. Mondeo's rear suspension, as with the front, is designed around McPherson struts on all variants but the estate. It's known as a quadra-link suspension. Longitudinal control of each rear wheel is handled by a tie bar. This bolts between the wheel knuckle and the vehicle body. Lateral control of each wheel is by two horizontal side arms. These locate between the wheel knuckle and the rear cross member. The anti-roll bar, standard on all models, acts on the front side arm. To avoid the rear suspension intruding into the load area on the estate, a slightly different layout has been adopted. One long side arm bolts between the rear suspension cross member and the wheel knuckle, with a coil spring locating between it and the cross member. The tie bar for longitudinal location has been retained, although a different design is used. There's a second short side arm, and separate angled dampers are fitted between the wheel knuckles and body. In service, you'll find that the front wheel bearings on all models are the double roller bearing type. If these need to be replaced, each is secured by a snap ring on either side. Removal of the bearings can be done with existing special tools. Should you need to dismantle the rear suspension, you'll find that each rear sidearm is clearly marked to assist you in refitting them. Another service point on the rear suspension, rear wheel toe can be adjusted. The inner locating bolt for each rear sidearm is an X center bolt. Once loosened, they can be used to adjust toe in and toe out. Not the sort of thing you'd normally do with a vehicle on a hoist, but it was convenient to show the feature this way. The rubber bushes at either end of the front side arms can be replaced in service. However, those on the rear side arms 
can't be replaced. These arms are supplied as complete assemblers. If you're lifting Mondeo for any service work, make sure that you do not use a jack under either the front or rear subframes. And if you're using a wheel-free hoist, make sure that you position the lifting arms correctly. Precise lifting instructions are detailed in your workshop literature. Adaptive damping is a new feature being offered on Mondeo. Outwardly, the dampers that are used look like those forming part of a conventional McPherson strut with its integral coil spring. However, at the bottom of each strut is a small solenoid valve. With this valve closed, the damper's natural setting is firm, but when the solenoid is powered, it opens a small valve that allows fluid from the inner chamber of the damper to pass above and below the damper piston more easily. This creates the damper's soft setting. Switching between the soft and firm settings, or specifically control of the current to the solenoid, is handled by the adaptive damping electronic module. This is housed in the boot of Mondeo. If the adaptive damping is switched to its automatic mode by the driver, the module immediately sets the dampers to soft, but it also monitors key systems in the car, one being the steering. A sharp turn of the wheel and the sensor on the steering column sends a signal to the module. Another sensor monitors the brake pedal. A third monitors the throttle plate, sending a signal when the accelerator is pressed down sharply. A fourth sensor is contained in the module itself, monitoring the car's vertical motion. Should any of these sensors detect an action or attitude that is outside predetermined limits, the module will immediately switch off the current being sent to the solenoid valve. The valve closes and the damper switches to its firm setting in just a fraction of a second. In service, the first sign of any fault in the system will be signalled by a warning light on the dashboard. If this remains on for more than some three seconds after switching on the ignition, then system diagnosis is necessary. This should be carried out using the new FDS 2000 Diagnostic Centre. The diagnostic plug to which you connect FDS is located in the boot next to the module.
all Mondeos are fitted with power steering and all have a fully adjustable steering column. The power steering rack is located behind the axle line. It's belted to the suspension subframe in a suitably protected location and its design should be familiar to you. The power steering fluid reservoir is located on the right hand side of the engine bulkhead and there's a sensor that signals EEC4 when engine speed needs to be increased to sustain low speed power steering effort. In service, there's a new adapter for use with a vacuum pump when bleeding the system. When doing this, the steering should be turned from lock to lock with the engine running. The vacuum pump, with its adapter, should be applied to the fluid reservoir to create the vacuum needed for complete bleeding of the system. Mondeos are fitted with front disc brakes which are vented and a single piston floating caliper. Routine service and repair procedures on these brakes should be familiar to you. At the rear, drum brakes are used on all Mondeos except for 4x4 variants which have disc brakes. The drum brakes are self-adjusting and each has the familiar inspection hole to check brake shoe wear. The handbrake cable is also self-adjusting and requires no attention in service. Where disc brakes are fitted at the rear, the handbrake operates on a lever arm that compresses the caliper, providing an efficient parking brake mechanism. Mondeo's ABS system has been developed jointly by Ford and Bendix. The single ABS unit houses the actuator, pressure pump, ABS module, and unusually, the pressure conscious regulator valves that control pressure to the rear brakes. The unit locates under the brake booster. The system operates on all four wheels with electronic sensors keeping the module informed of any brake lockup. traction control being offered on Mondeo uses the ABS system in reverse to control wheel spin at speeds under 50 kilometers per hour. With the system in operation, the ABS module receives signals from the ABS wheel sensors. When one wheel starts to spin, the ABS unit repeatedly applies the brake to that wheel until traction has been regained. Applying the brakes will immediately switch off the system so that normal ABS brake operation is regained.
At speeds over 50 kilometers per hour, traction control is solely achieved through a throttle actuator located in the engine compartment. As soon as a wheel starts to spin, the actuator repeatedly backs off the throttle plate until traction is regained. The traction control switch is next to the steering column on the fascia. As with adaptive damping, should there be a fault in the traction control system, a warning light beside the instrument cluster will remain on. This is separate from the ABS warning light. If you're faced with this in service, the first step is to carry out a diagnostic check on this combined ABS traction control system using the new FDS 2000. The diagnostic plug to which FDS should be connected is on the left-hand side of the engine bulkhead. When the fault is located, FDS will advise you on what steps to take to cure that fault. Mondeo's safety features are headed by the new airbag system. That fitted to the driver's side being standard, the passenger side being optional. Each module contains an airbag and gas generator. In the case of the passenger module, two generators. Both modules should be handled with care. The passenger module locates under the fascia opposite the passenger seat. The driver is in the centre of the steering wheel. A so-called clock spring in the steering wheel hub ensures a reliable contact with the wiring loom. The diagnostic and sensor unit is next to the steering column above the brake pedal. You'll find an airbag warning lamp in the instrument cluster. If this light doesn't go out within five seconds of switching on the ignition, this indicates a fault. If after ten seconds the light flashes once every four seconds, the driver's airbag is the cause twice every four seconds and the passenger airbag is the cause. Service on the airbag system should be handled with extreme care. The driver's airbag module can be removed from the steering wheel by releasing four bolts and disconnecting the electrical connection. Before starting any further work, the new simulator tool must be fitted to the electrical plug. Other new special tools include the multi-plug adapter and two new multi-plug probes for use only on the airbag system. Detailed service procedures are laid out in your workshop literature. In addition to the airbag system, Mondeo's seats are specially shaped to prevent anyone slipping under their seatbelt in the event of an accident. There's also a new seat belt restraint system. The seat belt buckle has a special pre-tensioner unit. A mechanical sensor operates a lever mechanism which pulls the buckle down to tension the belt in the event of an accident. Once this unit has been used, it can't be reset and must be replaced. On the seatbelt reel, a grabber system has been incorporated. Again, a mechanical sensor operates the grabber to reduce the amount of seatbelt payout in an accident.
there are two other important safety features that have relevance to the body shop. There's a new crash bar located between the A-pillars. This carries the steering column assembly and also the passenger airbag. The doors too have strong crash bars built into them to reduce the dangers from a side impact accident. And from safety to security. Door locking on Mondeo is new. The lock, outer handle and, if equipped with central locking, the door lock motor are all combined in a compact unit which can be removed and replaced as a single assembly. Central locking, a remote door lock control, anti-theft alarm and internal scanning are all optionally available. The electrical system too has a number of new features. You'll find that the battery position on both right and left hand drive variants is behind the left hand headlamp. The battery junction box with its main fuses, some relays and loom connections is located next to the battery. Again on all variants the central junction box is located on the left hand side of the vehicle under the fascia. A press button catch allows the box to tilt down for easy access to all fuses, relays and loom connections. There's also a new central timer unit under the junction box that takes the place of all the usual individual timer relays. You'll find a new loom connector bracket is located behind the right hand A pillar. It allows easy access to all major loom connectors and keeps them free from vibration. Mondeo's wiring system is modular with separate looms connecting different systems. At key points in the car, particularly in the footwells, cable runs are now protected by new cable channels. To service and repair Mondeo, a number of new special tools have been developed to supplement those carried over from other models. Four new tools are required for the steering system. There's a new angled socket wrench. This is needed to unbolt the steering rack from the subframe. There's a second unusually shaped socket wrench. This one enables you to loosen and remove the power steering's hydraulic pipe unions. There's also a special expander tool. This enables you to expand and protect new Teflon sealer rings that have to be fitted to the hydraulic pipe unions whenever they've been undone. As we've seen earlier in the programme, there's a new adapter to be used with a vacuum pump when bleeding the power steering system. There are two new guide pins which must be used to align the front suspension subframe when refitted after removal from the car. The pins slot through holes in the subframe and into alignment holes in the body floor pan. You must also use them if the rear suspension cross member of the two wheel drive saloon is being refitted. In both cases, accurate wheel alignment relies on precise reassembly of these subframes.
A particularly useful new tool to use on Mondeo and other vehicles is the hose clip remover and installer. Its advantage is that it can be used with ease where a hose clip's location makes it difficult to use pliers. There's also a new clamping tool to ensure the clamps around drive shaft gaiters are correctly fitted. The tool is designed for use with a torque wrench so that each clamp is tightened to the prescribed limit and no more. To help remove the fuel tank sender units on both Mondeo and on transit, a new socket wrench has been developed. There's also a new suspension bush remover and installer for use on Mondeo's front suspension arms. It should be used under an hydraulic press to ensure the job is correctly carried out. To help remove the coil springs from Mondeo's McPherson struts, a new spring compressor has been developed. Each pair of clamps are a different size, one pair for front springs and one for rear. And although it may look familiar, there's a new gear shift alignment tool for Mondeo it's used in the same way, but it's a slightly different size. There's also a locking mechanism to ensure the gear shift is held firmly in place while adjustment is made. For cars fitted with air conditioning, there are three further special tools and their use is detailed in your workshop literature. And the final tool that's been developed, the adapter for the engine support bridge for use when removing a transaxle from Mondeo, has already been seen earlier in the programme. As can be seen, Mondeo offers a new dimension in European family car motoring with its smart good looks, its high level of interior comfort and appointment, its all-round safety package, and highly advanced technical specification. For you in the workshop, it also represents yet another step forward into state-of-the-art automotive technology, perhaps the most exciting challenge of the decade so far. The new Mondeo from Ford.